Okay, so uh, the game development project is on this lecture's agenda. I know that most of you probably got the information about this course a bit late. That's because our study office decided that you should not be able to register for this course this year for some reason. So that's why you can see this course in web body. And also why not possess that this course isn't happening. Well, but it is and you are more than welcome to participate here. So uh, also if you have friends or some colleagues who would like to join, who would be interested on this course or some modules of this course, I'll get back to that a bit later. Uh, you can uh, tell them to watch this presentation online and then uh, send me an email as instructed. So basically uh, this course uh, will have all its lectures in on online uh, environment, uh, YouTube, Noppa, Moodle, somewhere where we can host them usually, uh, YouTube and the links to the videos are in Noppa. So in the future if you have uh, something scheduled on this same time or you can't attend the follow-up lectures then you can more or less just view them online. Anyway, so what are we doing here today? And what is this course uh, game development project? So today uh, we are going to talk about how this particular module can be passed. What are we going to do here at this Fundamentals of Unity part. And in general talk about what the game development project course actually is. It's not only one course. Well, it is, but it's, it has several modules which you can take or not take. And you can decide what parts of this entire year-long course you want to take. It also allows you to uh, decide how many study credits you want from this course since there's uh, several smaller modules which you can pass. Anyway, today we will start the first module and talk a few words about Unity, the game engine, which we will be using on this first module and also talking about how to start making games. Uh, probably most of you are already second or third year students or master's degree students, so you have some knowledge and experience on programming work. Uh, on this course the idea is that we take that programming knowledge and try to use it to enable you to be able to work in the games industry. If you are a first year student, uh, if you can think you can manage all the programming tasks or you find that these things aren't too complicated or difficult, you are more than welcome to stay on this course. And overall, we uh, have no set rules about who can attend these courses. So, uh, without any other uh, uh, disclaimers, what are the course objectives? These are something that's uh, written on the uh, course uh, curricula. So it more or less says that after finishing the course, student understands how game development differs from traditional software projects and can apply software development skills in a game context. Uh, you understand the possibilities and restrictions of the game products and have identified the skills for professional game development work. Uh, you are able to do some stuff uh, with the game development tools we talk about and are actually able to design and implement game resources, something like 3D models, animations, uh, create levels, uh, combine assets to make games, that sort of stuff. So basically a crash course into making games. So these are more or less the legalese part of this course. So something that uh, is written on the curriculum. Basically what we do on this first module, which takes the first and second period, is 
to give you an idea how to develop games with a modern game engine. Uh, do some introductory stuff with Unity so that you can later work with Unity engine comfortably, for example, on the Finnish Game Jam event, which is a code camp held in January. And also understand what sort of knowledge or experience or, for example, programming language uh, skills you need to be able to work in the games industry. For people in computer science major, that's more or less important because the games industry is one of the most, uh, let's say, uh, lucrative areas of information technology currently and it's also the hype area which is currently hiring. Well, Robbie is kicking people out, but that's uh, a just minor, minor detail here. In general, the industry is growing and has been doing so for the last 10 years. So, uh, if you went to the Noppa site uh, this week or a couple of nights ago, you might have seen that it's this game development project, CT68, 8000 is actually a cluster of all sorts of different things. So unlike usual courses where we have 12 lectures, some project work and then you take the exam and the course, oh, course is over, then you can forget everything we talked about. The idea with the game development project this course is that it actually offers you some uh, tangible effects well, skills and experience to go from the uh, traditional or our computer science program to something that's able to work or find employment in the games industry. And for that reason, we offer different ways to complete this course during the academic year. We are here. The first module, Fundamentals of Unity, takes the first and second period. It's more or less a course where you are just taught how to use your existing knowledge or experiences on software development on game context. It also offers you uh, experience and some knowledge on, for example, the Unity engine about the, how to make animations work, how to use 3D objects or textures or like effects or how to manipulate physics engines, that sort of stuff. So that when the uh, Finnish Game Jam code camp hits uh, on the third period, you will be working in teams and you already know how to implement your ideas or implement games. So in your team you can work uh, efficiently. One does the programming work, one creates the graphics and so on and so on. And you can create a game prototype proof of concept for your game design. That's the idea of the second module, the Finnish uh, yeah, game, uh, game Jam Code Camp, which will be in late January. Traditionally, the third module has been the crash course, but for this year and next, we are actually adding a one more module, the Gamification Proto Camp. It, uh, it's focusing on the other topics of game industry. Not only games for entertainment, but serious gaming, games for health, gamification of existing services, these sort of things, which are more or less things that traditional serious companies are doing. For example, uh, just this weekend, Veikkaus, the gambling company, the national gambling company of Finland, made a gamified approach of the internet services. They added this sort of points system or ranking system for their users if they tweet about their games or talk about something or do different stuff on their service uh, on their service portal at internet. So gamification, games for health, monetization, these sort of things which are related to games industry but are not about making in, uh, games for any day. It's on the intensive week between the third and fourth period and 
It also supplements the other course on gamification, more or less acts as its standalone uh, project work where you get to actually do something or implement something besides just designing stuff. And finally, the fourth part, uh, which actually uh, takes the fourth period and summer, it's the idea is that you create a game uh, prototype or game demo. You create your marketing plan, your marketing material, your uh, funding demonstration version, which you could, you could use on the industry meetings or your financiers to get or apply for funding or so investors that you are actually doing something. It's, so it's more or less creating a startup company with a startup product without actually making it uh, official. Of course there's a couple of uh, cases where the team which was making a game for the crash course actually founded a company and published the work. But that's up to you if you want to make your team a full company. But the idea is that you go as close to the business and marketing aspects as is reasonable to teach on the computer science program. It also sort of expects you to find yourself someone who knows something about business and marketing aspects from the uh, school of business and well, and from cutting people to supplement your team of programmers and probably artists you pick up from the code camp. So overall, this is the game development project. If you want to take all these modules during one year, you will have something to do uh, for the entire winter and until the Midsummer's Eve next summer. And actually, so why are these things separate? First of all, the idea is that you take these modules roughly in the order of starting with this course or module Unity, which uh, is today, then take the Game Jam, then go to Protocamp, and finally take the Crash Course. It's designed so that the difficulty always or the expectations for the quality of your work keeps rising towards the end. However, it's only programming work. So you can take these modules wherever you want and you get the corresponding amount of course credits for doing so. So four credits from this course, well this module Fundamentals of Unity, four credits from the Game Jam, five credits from the crash course, uh, crash course and two credits from the protocamp because the protocamp is, takes only a couple of days and it more or less supplements other course which is also three credits. So finally, if you take all these modules uh, they increment each other so you end up with one course uh, game development project which is 15 credits. It's all the voluntary courses on your uh, master's uh, course or ma master's uh, degree program, but it's more or less also a way to get uh, experience and knowledge which helps you to work on games industry. And of course we try to use the local game companies people as our, for example, referees for your game uh, idea pitches or when we are giving, uh, talking about how actually game development happens or how actual game developing company works. We try to get people from the actual industry to, be, to talk to you here. So you don't have to trust me, you can trust the people who actually do this sort of thing as a living. So anyway, uh, also, uh, when you, if you complete the fundamentals of Unity, you get four credits. If you go to the game jam, you, your game development project is upgraded to eight credits, and so on and so on. So, uh, 
You can select the order yourself. You don't have to do all these things in, during one year. So you can, for example, take the Unity Now game uh, code camp now, take the crash course next year, and so on and so on. Uh, as long as you, uh, well, just remember which ones you took, because you can get credits for each module once. So you can't take, for example, the game jam code camp five times and then claim 20 points. It doesn't work that way. But anyway, uh, so uh, why are we starting with Unity? Why are we talking about the Unity, well, Unity 3D game engine? Well, the simple answer is because it's free. It's probably the most used game engine in the world right now. If you apply for a job in games industry, if you are able to use Unity, you more or less will find yourself employment. It's also completely free. It's free to the extent that you can actually release a commercial product with the free version of Unity. It doesn't harass you with anything stupid like watermarking your screenshots or anything like that. It only shows a small made with Unity engine commercial at the start. Well, of course, if you make more than 10,000 euros, uh, sorry, 100,000 euros profit with your game, you are required to upgrade your license to the pro version. But it also means that if you make that much money, the uh, purchase of pro version is more or less irrelevant. <coughs> also, with the pro version, you get things like optimization algorithms for object loading order or optimizations for different mobile platforms or game consoles. Pretty much the stuff you don't need when you are trying to learn things. There's also a wealth of tutorials and freely available stuff on the internet, so you don't have to draw every little thing yourself. For example, make an animated character or stuff like that. There's a huge amount of resources available for free, so you can use them on your uh, learning projects. It's compatible with most game development related tools, so it doesn't matter if you are making animations with uh, 3D Studio or Maya or Blender or whatever, or what, what is the graphics program your artist likes, likes to use when they are drawing stuff, everything will probably work without problem. So you can import stuff to your project and, and use whatever program you want to. There's also an easy interface. You don't always have to do everything by programming uh, everything by hand. So you can also use those artists and people who are not that good developers or source code generators as your testers or people fine-tuning the timing of something like uh, sound effects or animations or stuff like that. Uh, it's compatible with every gaming relevant platform, so if you want to release something for Nintendo, something for PlayStation, something for Xbox, create browser games or whatever, you can do it with Unity. And finally, if you want to use your own money to customize or modify your your uh, well user interface or add tools to your uh, available toolboxes, there's al almost every <coughs> imaginable extension available for Unity. So, uh, some examples, for example, games which have been made with Unity. Well, this is the first one, Kerbal Space Program. Uh, does anyone know what this game is? Uh, raise your hand, so I sort of know how many people I have to talk about details. So it's more or less a space program simulator. You can create space, station, uh, space stations, satellites, create a moon landing, or more or less 
creates a rocket which doesn't work and explodes in the atmosphere. That's the usual outcome. Uh, anyway, this program is accurate simulation to the degree that NASA actually sponsors this game right now. So, uh, really sophisticated modeling of a, well, space flight, rocketry, space shuttle missions, atmosphere, at atmospheric interference and all sorts of stuff. You can they create a rocket and fly to the other planet on your solar, sy solar system or mess up the tra trajectories and fly out from the solar system, get literally lost in space. Uh, the other game I brought here as an example is this one, Scrolls. It's made by the same people who made Minecraft. Okay, so this wasn't a huge hit like Minecraft. It isn't actually a very well-known game, because the Blizzard uh, Hearthstone basically is the same game, but much more popular. And the Magic, for example, Magic the Gathering is a card game, which is as complex as this one, but wildly more popular. Anyway, the idea is that you can create these sort of games with Unity. 2D games, really simple uh, deck building game, where you are more or less playing complicated cards with rules against other people. So, more or less a completely different game compared to the uh, simulation game I showed earlier. Also this one, uh, because of the poor quality of our overhead projector here, you aren't seeing anything, and because this game, Space Hulk, wasn't such a great success, you probably haven't heard of it either, but it's a strate strategic game, a uh, strategic board game put into a 3D environment for computer. So you have these space marines here, you dig around on a, an abandoned spaceship, try to shoot these aliens here and try to recover artifacts or just stay alive long enough to escape from the ship. Strate uh, st uh, strategy element, elements are, for example, the turn-based approach here, different weapons, all sort of things like can this guy see here, obviously this guy can, and it, the, he can shoot there. Uh, basically, sort of turn-based game in a sense, something like the XCOM game was. Also a, a demonstration that really high-level 3D graphics are no problem. And for example, you could use the Unity engine to create something like Metal Gear Solid or that, that sort of stuff if you would want to. The final example is actually a bit surprising. This game. It was made with Unity. Uh, completely 2D, two-dimensional game uh, for mobile devices. Yet again, completely different from everything else. All the other games were PC or console games or something like that. This one is for the most widely uh, popular uh, game console, console system, uh, iPhone or Android phone. Uh, it's uh, on its own. Uh, it's on its own category for the amount of users for the environment or ecosystem. But anyway, uh, the mobile games are also no problem here. So, more or less, if you can imagine it with Unity you more or less can create it. And if you want to create, uh, uh, publish your game on a Nintendo console, that's okay. If you want to publish it on Android phone, that's also possible if you want to make it as a power-hungry uh, or computation power-hungry 3D game on a PC architecture, that's also possible. So, uh, with that uh, description, it's time to give you a demonstration of what actually is 
this Unity development tool. Uh, some of you have been uh, on the uh, Game Jam code camp early uh, before, so you more or less know what Unity is, and well, since it's trying to get stuck, I don't, I think, can we give you a demonstration, uh, but, well, well, of course it doesn't work. Well, anyway, uh, if this doesn't work, then it, well, we can also try something like line dancing, but anyway, <laughs> Well, excellent. So, uh, let's try something else. So, there's a... <coughs> there's, for example, this game made with Unity. This is just something our uh, one master's thesis student was doing when he was uh, making an example of what sort of uh, technologies are available for uh, with Unity or testing what sort of things we actually have to teach to, other, uh, to our students if we want to teach something about game development. Okay, so you saw that there was a robot. It was an AI intelligence, really stupid actually in a sense that they try to run through the walls, but if you get close enough they start to follow you and you can use your hand cannon to actually shoot those guys. So the hot dog that flies out from the guy's arm is actually a laser, laser beam <coughs> which destroys the enemies. So we have a 3D level here, a maze where we are trying to find a key. We have our character here, a sort of a mini-map there, and we have explosion uh, effects and sound, and we would have sound effects if they were, uh, well, audible for you. I put the com uh, laptop on mute, but there's uh, background music, there's sound effects for walking and shooting and stuff like that. Oh, we have our next customer here, so let's try to hit it. No, don't run away, I'm just trying to kill you. Okay, so sound effects and all other sorts of things here, really. Also, physics engine, the robot isn't able to run through the walls, also doesn't uh, drop through the floor, or these sort of things. And if we would have something like hand grenades or stuff like that, they would have realistic trajectories, for example, they would fall to earth and that sort of things. So, anyway, I'm not going to go through this level and try to find you the key. It's random position, so it can be anywhere. But anyway, all the basic uh, things which you more or less need to understand how games work. So there's a skybox, there's the level, there's idle animation, there's walking animation, shooting, collision, detection, sound effects, visual effects, and the, these sort of things. So, all the basic stuff, really. Okay, so, uh, going back to the uh, presentation. Uh, so, it's not the Call of Duty Black Ops or anything like that. I'm not expecting you to create something that sells millions. If you make something, please include me in your company. Uh, but anyway, the idea is that all the technology which is needed to create something that actually looks like a PlayStation 1 or 2 uh, uh, level game, something that was sold in stores for like, like 10 years ago, is there. So everything else is just making a bit more detailed models, making a bit more detailed textures, making a bit more detailed levels, using more high-def sound effects or, or using more uh, crazier or more realistic lighting uh, models or these sort of things. So 
it's only fine-tuning the details. These are the fundamentals which enable you to actually do something. Okay, so uh, I mentioned earlier that all these uh, modules on the game development project are assisted self-study modules. Basically, what it means is that we don't have weekly lectures or demos or weekly exercises. We will have a couple of follow-up days where I will be giving you a lecture on, for example, how the basics of how game companies work or some talk about the resources or tools and things that are actually useful for game development. Now these follow-up days are also uh, open for you to present your project works. You will be doing a couple of projects here. First, uh, a tutorial project uh, demonstrating that you have actually gone through a couple of the game demonstration works with the Unity and then designing and implementing your own idea for a game. So basically doing development work and demonstrating me that you have actually been doing something and I will give you a couple of more lectures during the, uh, during the rest of the first period and during the second period. Uh, in the meanwhile, you can find help usually from the ear channel in it. There's a couple of guys hanging around who are making games as their hobby. A couple of guys actually making games as their main source of income. And there's also my consulting hours Tuesdays. And you can send me email and you can also uh, ask me if I know for example tutorial for something or if I have encountered some problems. Uh, this sort of, say you're the same type of problem that you have encountered before. But for example, because the Unity got a main version update just this summer to Unity 5, uh, the, probably the best way to gather information is to go to the Unity support forums and support tutorial sites and their teaching section of their web pages to ask questions. They have more or less everything there. Everything is more or less explained on their own manual and the, tu the tutorials show you how to make simple arcade games or realize a bit more uh, interesting projects. For example, there's one game which is more or less a ripoff from the Metal Gear Solid 1 a stealth game where you are avoiding stuff. Also, this sort of a simple shooting games, space fighter games, all the uh, arcade titles like Breakout or, uh, well, Bong or these sort of things that your grandparents have played at some point. But anyway, the basic stuff is there. I don't think and I will not be reading those things out loud to you here on weekly lectures. I leave it up to you to learn that stuff and demonstrate me that you have actually been doing something. Well, you can also try to rip off the complete project work from the Unity website, but I still expect you to be able to describe me why certain things work, what certain commands do, and that sort of things. So it is actually more easier to you to just uh, follow the tutorial yourself so you know what one command in one script uh, does. Okay, so how do you pass this first module? Like I said, there's two projects. Well, actually three, because you will be doing two tutorial works from the Unit website. Uh, there's a uh, of course, since I have no idea if my computer is still messed up, let's see. Okay, we've got this far. Excellent. So, on this Unity website, uh, we have tutorial section here. There's a couple of different tutorials. Survival shooting game, roguelike game, 
really simple rollerball tutorial which I would have showed you but well Unity is still not responding not like I would have liked to you show you anyway and so select two of these tutorials of course you might immediately observe that some of them are more difficult than others but select two projects from the difficulty level beginner or higher these mini projects actually completing them all counts as one because they are something like 15 to 30 minutes per game so select two of these and demonstrate me that you have actually done them so uh, where's the presentation there and then make your own design based on what you know and what you want to do I'm not going to tell you or force you to do something like adventure game or whatever or arcade game or shooter or driving game you can use your own imagination to define your own personal project I will probably be telling you that this is absolutely too uh, complex or detailed or too laborious for you to actually finish it but anyway you can select whatever you want but just keep the idea relatively simple think breakout space war pac-man the first mario bros arcade game not the platformer which we probably all know now uh, that's a bit too much much i don't i don't mean that the mechanic uh, mechanical part of the platformer mario bros is too much i mean the, that there's too many levels and stuff like that so since you only have a couple of months to do this thing I wouldn't start with a fully fledged game so uh, also some materials or documents or if you are a uh, enterprising person and go watch our previous years lectures on this same course you might see that there's a talk about this unity book by Sue Blackman Unfortunately, it talks about the older version of Unity, and there were even some bugs and missing descriptions of the book, so we will not be using that. So, if you find some information which talks about making this Unity uh, tutorial from the Sue Blackman book, uh, it's old information, you can just discard it. However, if you already own a book, about Unity or find a book from library or from the bookstore somewhere else online or some other tutorial project you, which you would like to use as your tutorial work you are more than welcome to use it just send me an email uh, to the uh, link to the book or the tutorial and I can give you the permission to use it so it doesn't have to be the one from the Unity site, you can also do some other tutorials. I just have to know it before you come to show it to me because I have to check that it actually teaches you some stuff. For example, if you would have been doing the Sue Blackman book, uh, the tutorial there was uh, creating this sort of a 3D adventure game. So you can more or less do whatever you want, uh, but uh, well, but this particular project isn't mandatory this year. So, uh, a couple of words about the other uh, part, making your own game. Of course, the idea with the game project, uh, game development project, is that you actually implement your own idea. So, first you have to define what you want from your game. So, that part comes with the personal project and the design documentation. So, it's not really that laborers task. We aren't filling any ISO IEC international standardized form. We, I just expect you to write down these aspects. What's the general theme? What are your main characters or main actors in your game? I know that if your game is about running over stuff with a barrel, the barrel will not have that much of a personality or characteristics but still, what are the main actors of your game? What is the general theme? What's your genre? Is it a shooter game, platformer, puzzle game, etc.? What are the important features you think that you absolutely have to have 
or your game to be uh, functional. Uh, if there's a story, what is it or the main idea of it? I don't want to have a full manuscript for a play or movie. I just want to have an outline for the story. Why is this happening? <coughs> and the technical decisions besides using Unity. So if you want to use certain uh, certain non-standard physics library or if you want to use certain drawing software or animation studio or something like that, uh, please include these things in your design document. But like I said earlier, I'm not expecting much from you. It's not a personal thing or I'm not trying to insult you here. I just want to uh, enforce the idea that make something that works. Your game has to be uh, something that either gives the player a score on how they are doing and the player can win or lose the game. Either by playing through the last level or for example on this example missing the ball and losing all their lives so the high score will then be their final score. So your game has to be something that starts is playable and you can win or lose or you get your score or lose. So complete product, so to say. But still, keep the idea simple. For example, this game here is the breakout is probably the simplest game ever made. It's actually simpler than Pong because uh, the Pong needs to have other player, <coughs> so you need to at least have one friend or you have to have an artificial intelligence. This version doesn't need either of them. You just use the ball to break all the tiles and how much time it took is your final score. So really simple. But still it sold millions on its time. It made someone a millionaire and so on and so on. So keep your idea simple. It can work. Some other ideas. The first Pac-Man the first Mario Bros. You can also make a, an, an adventure game. That's not really unheard of. And you can also try something else. By the way, does anyone know what game this is? Okay, yeah. So for the rest of the audience, this is E.T., the game of the movie from uh, Atari Game System. Basically considered the worst game ever, actually uh, sank the company Atari completely during the early 80s. And that's why during the 80s in every movie people were playing Nintendo because the American Atari company went bankrupt because of these sort of high quality products. Uh, anyway, actually that's all, also the only game in video game history which was printed out in more copies than, were, than the game consoles uh, were sold during the time. It had something like 5 million cartridges when the Atari game console had only sold something like 3.5 million units. So I don't know what they were planning to do with the 1.5 million difference, but hey, I, it's not really my problem anyway. Uh, so, also this game here. So everyone probably knows what this game is. It's the first actually successful 3D shooting game. Okay, the Wolfenstein was first, but considering that it had the graphical representation of a potato, I think this one is the first actually successful game in 3D shooter game history. But considering that this game actually isn't 3D, it's, rep it's a 2D game represented in 3D form. You couldn't jump on the first Doom. Actually, all the levels were 2D levels, uh, but the, the game engine created the illusion that you would actually be uh, going under something or had, have a height difference. You couldn't even use the mouse to look around. The guy all, always defaulted to the center of the screen or to the small offsets around the area. So basically, this game was 
walking around uh, in a plane simulator with seven different weapons and the sort of an artificial intelligence which only waited for the player to come to this one room and then just walk towards them shooting stuff. Uh, it also had some interesting side effects like enemies were able to fight each other when the AI, uh, because the AI focused on the uh, things that were damaging them. So if you were able to fool two strong enemies to shoot each other, they would start to fight each other. But that's more of a problem with the artificial intelligence or bug with it, which was kept because it was sort of a funny thing. But anyway, this game is really just a puzzle game. You try to find your way through the puzzle, collect the key cards and get to the next exit and next level. So basically almost a simple game as the demonstration I showed you earlier. But anyway, keep your idea simple. I don't expect you to create a block bus, uh, it, any uh, hugely successful blockbuster game. I just want you to demonstrate that you can design and make something functional. The time to make something more difficult or complex is with the game jam and if you want to have really <coughs> something uh, somewhat a spectacle uh, then or a spectacularly uh, fantastic game then there's the crash course of the fourth period and during the summer time. So use your more complicated and greater ideas there. Okay, so, few design restrictions then. Of course, uh, you are more or less allowed to use whatever means necessary to get your game done, but there's a couple of things. First of all, it has to be self-made. Uh, not really that surprising, but, well, there's, there was one example of American programmer guy who outsourced all his work to China and then just collected the paycheck at the home office. Well, let's not try that. Uh, so you have to make the game yourself. If you are doing cooperation with someone else, that's completely fine. But you still both have to turn in your own projects. If you are doing cooperation with someone, please mention it on your game design document or in game credits or somewhere else. Uh, you can use the asset store stuff. Uh, there's an asset store which sells things like 3D objects for game level design or animated characters or stuff like that in the Unity store. You are more than welcome to use them. You can use the free stuff if you like, to, like it or you can even buy your own assets if you want to. If you want to use 1000 euros to buy yourself a fully functional level with fully functional enemies uh, with your own credit card to impress me on a for study credit course then no, by all means do it but anyway uh, if you use external assets something you didn't draw yourself or music you didn't compose yourself or you used public domain stuff or something like that Please include a reference to the documentation where you got it. Simple as that. You can use whatever you find as long as it's acquired legally. So it can't be ripped off from existing game or screen capture from, from something or it can't be a preview model of something that's actually in sale. If it's public domain, self-made, open source, or if it allows non-commercial use, then it's okay by me. Just include a reference that I took this character from here. I took this background music from here. Also, some, uh, some sanity checks here. So this project has to be openable in standard free Unity without no commercial add-ons, and it uh, has to be playable with Windows 7 workstation with keyboard and mouse. If that is not possible, then the compiled version has to be uh, playable with the web player on a normal Firefox or Chrome installation. And also, uh, 
even if you have license for the Unity Pro or you activate the tryout period for Unity Pro, you still should make this game development project work with the free Unity. I'm saying this uh, now because it might come as a surprise to someone, but if you open your project files with Unity Pro, it watermarks that project as Pro license project and you can never again open it with the free version or of Unity. So do not use Unity Pro here. You don't need it at this point and I want to be able to check your project work and my personal copy isn't the Pro version because it keeps messing up things made with the free or personal Unity. Okay, so schedule. Uh, today is the orientation day and the deadline for delivering the tutorial projects and your own develop game design document for your own, own game is in the start of November. So you have about two months to complete the tutorial work. You can do it faster if you want to. This is just the deadline for the work. And that's the deadline because I want you to have at least one full month for delivering the personal project with it, which is at the beginning, uh, the day after the Independence Day in December. That's because I want to keep your final grades before the Christmas break so that we can get the uh, third period for the game jam course. Anyway, this uh, schedule gives you two months to deliver the tutorial works and after that one additional month to deliver the personal project. We will have two follow-up days, which I will announce later based on how active you have been or how many requests for help there has been so far. So follow the NOPPA pages for this course. That is the place where I will give you <coughs> the information when we will have the follow-up days. I uh, say that the first follow-up day will probably be uh, in uh, end of this month and the second follow-up day probably uh, something like a week or two before the first deadline. But that's just rough estimate. Follow the NOPPA pages for this course. Uh, finally, some other information. Uh, this is more or less just a summary of what I have already said. If you want to show your tutorial project or your personal project, you can do it on follow-up days. Just show me that, okay, this is what I did. This is how it works. I also have consulting hours or we can arrange meetings separately. In both these occasions, B or C, please send me email first. I have actually teaching responsibilities outside university this fall, so I might not be here when uh, you think that I should be. So ar arrange meeting or send me an email telling that you are actually, you want to come to show me your work on the consulting hours. But the, the primary way is to show your work on the follow-up day. And send your stuff to me via email, but because these Unity projects are usually quite huge, something like tens to hundreds of uh, megabytes, then uh, use your own personal uh, website, for example, personal.lut.fi, to host your project files. Don't send me a one gigabit email, please. Also, we are using a bit uh, different grading scheme this, on this course. Basically, after everyone has submitted their work, uh, we will be doing prayer review. So you, each one of you will grade a work from two other participants of this course. Uh, the average grade from these prayer reviews will be compared against mine, uh, my grade, and then 
that's your final grade. Also, if you did good work on the review work, you might get a grade upgrade. If you did crappy work, then you might get downgraded. But I can promise you that I will not downgrade your work from, what, from grade 1 to 0. So you can't fail this course by doing half-assed uh, review work, but of course I might request you to actually do it properly again. Uh, the uh, idea is that you review, review your uh, colleagues or the other students' work against the game design documentation. This is also what you should be thinking when you make your own game design document. Since the grade will be focusing on aspects like how close to the original idea your implementation got, how ambitious the idea was, how complete the demo is as a game, and so on and so on, you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't uh, promise to deliver something huge and then turn up with a small mini game. You should think before you implement things. This is also about uh, how good you are setting or defining your own project and implementing your work. So there's stuff like music, sound effects, textures, stuff like that. If you included a tutorial or something like that in your work. So basically these sort of things. And the, your grade will be decided by your reviews like in game business in general, if you get terrible reviews, you get uh, zero money from your game. But if you get excellent reviews, then you get excellent grade. So more or less like that. So, uh, yeah, the schedule will be announced later based on how, uh, how much work you are doing or when you are doing your work. So again, please follow the not button. And the final grades will be available by the end of the second period. So when you go away for your Christmas holidays, you should be able to see your final grades by then. If there's someone who has to leave, for example, to go back to your home university uh, for the spring semester, or if someone is going to the military service for the spring, this grade will be given during this fall. So you will be able to use it on your study uh, program. Uh, finally, this is actually the final uh, slide about these arrangements. So because, for, because the audit didn't work because of administration, I have no idea to know who is enrolled on this course and who is not. So please send me an email uh, with the topic enrollment to the GPD, oh, sorry, it should be GD, GDP 2015 Unity course with your name, student number, and from your actively followed email address or including the email address if for some reason you didn't use that email, send me the uh, send me the enrollment info because I want to know how many students I have and how to contact you if there's any problems. So send me an email if you want to take this course. And if and when you are able to register to the Web Audi course also, from Web Audi to the course Game Development Project, do that also, but at least send me the email. Okay. Uh, so, a couple of things about Unity. It would be really helpful if the Unity would work, but since it doesn't, this is going to be a really short presentation. So, uh, the free-to-use version is available at unity3d.com and it comes with all the basic tools for lighting work, physics work, 3D model management, scenes, meaning, in different areas, levels, intermissions and, intermissions and so on. The user interface can be made with Unity. The particles, particle effects can be done with that. And the Unity uh, uses C-sharp 
and JavaScript as the main programming languages. You can also use Lua script, but almost everything is thought with C sharp and JavaScript. Uh, the user interface is based on drag and drop principle, and you can you more or less just select objects and then go to the inspector inspector module and change attributes or add collision detection stuff like and things like that to the 3D model. Of course, there's also normal coding work there, scripts and stuff like that. But for example, you don't have to worry about uh, attaching physics engines or uh, creating a uh, wrapping system for textures or managing the lighting tools or th stuff like that, uh, like in some old-fashioned types of uh, game development works. So you have the rendering engine and the physics engine and all that sort of things available with really nice uh, drag and drop and click around uh, interface. It also means that you don't have to worry about managing the memory allocations for 3D models and stuff like that, which was a real pain in the butt in the earlier approaches to game development. I more or less noticed because I kept, I was the lecturer of the course uh, Fundamentals of Computer Graphics in 2006, uh, sorry, 2007, and all these sort of things were spectacularly missing from the OpenGL tools of that era. So anyway, you really don't have to worry about too many technical things. Just make your levels, uh, set everything to work, and you have the collision detection and all the physics and stuff like that working out of the box. Okay, so uh, since I guess that, well, yes, no, well, that isn't working at all today. So basically, uh, I'll show you a really simple example. So this is a uh, demonstration I made earlier. So this is basically what you get from the first demo. You can use the mouse to control your platform and you can just bounce the ball in it. Okay, so at some point it drops. Well, that's not really a game, isn't it? It's just a really, really boring technical demonstration. But let's uh, go a bit further. Let's add textures. Let's add a, anim an animation. The, add a secondary camera or camera trick which makes it look like that we are running around. Uh, may give a, a specified 3D model for the platform and make the ball to be something completely different and add a couple of user interface elements and then we have something completely different. So this is a game where we are trying to rush things to the, to the operating room in a surgery ward, but well, it's really freakishly difficult. But anyway, this now is already a game. Just simple addition of a couple of models and a and couple of textures and camera drives and stuff like that makes the concept be an actual game. So, more or less, uh, take the simple idea and use it. Also, you can make a fairly simple uh, project with Unity and then create a game out of it. So, just have this platform where you can bounce around the ball, add textures, stuff like that, and it becomes a game. So, what should you be doing next? Get yourself a workstation, get, uh, install a copy of the Unity engine. Select your tutorial projects from the Unity website or from somewhere else in the internet. If you aren't using the tutorial projects from the Unity, then get the permission from me. When you are done with the two tutorial projects, write your own uh, game design document 
and present it to me. And when you have done your own game based on your design, present it to me again. Then do the reviews, submit the reports to me, and then you have the grades from this module. Also, be present at the follow-up days. Follow the course pages. Uh, register to the game development project course in Web Audi when it's possible. They said to me that it has been opened this morning. Probably might be not, but anyway, try to do that. And first of all, actually, what is missing here? Send me an email if you want to take this module this fall. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to go further into. Uh, the game design things, I will continue on the first follow-up day on what the uh, game development companies or the game development startups are actually doing on the first follow-up day. But now, if you have any questions, uh, please ask them now. Everything clear? Every everyone just wants to go away. Good. Excellent. If you have a problem, send me an email. If you want to give me a feedback, send me an email. If you want to give me an honest feedback, also send me an email. Thank you.